So yeah, so starting off, uh, we will be, uh, have two presentations, both Maggie Ardente and Roy will both be presenting. Starting us off, uh, Maggie will be uh, sharing with us about some of the activities uh, and accomplishments that the uh, AHA National Organization has had over the past year. Um, so yeah, please welcome our first guest speaker, Maggie Ardente. Thank you very much, Meg. Um, Roy and I have been in Houston since last Friday attending a symposium, the Institute for Humanist Studies Symposium over at Rice University. And I got to listen to Vic do a presentation about the work of the Humanists of Houston. And I was just amazed at all the different types of events you put on. We're really looking to your group as a model for other chapters across the country. I really want to know your secrets and how you're able to get such great turnout at, at a diverse type of group of events, lectures, social events, volunteer work. Uh, it's really amazing. So I, I appreciate learning more about your group and thank you for being a chapter and thank you for supporting humanism. Um, I want to start, obviously, what happened over the weekend too is something that is, is clearly on our minds uh, today uh, with regards to what happened with, with what happened in Paris. Um, it's certainly something that we just put out a statement about that. And um, I wanted to share, um, and I, I would have been able to put this up quickly, but I actually just saw it today, and I posted it on my personal Instagram page, um, an image that's being passed around on social media regarding the attacks. Um, it was actually drawn by a Charlie Hebdo cartoonist named Joanne Safar. Some of you may have seen this cartoon. It's a simple cartoon. It's just a, a person in a little bubble. But I'm going to read the text and what it says. And it says, friends from the whole world, thank you for pray for Paris, but we don't need more religion. Our faith goes to music, kisses, life, champagne, and joy. Hashtag Paris is about life. And I also, I also thought that that hashtag, hashtag humanism should also be with this statement. Um, I think that's what humanism is all about. It's about recognizing that this is the one life we have and that we need to make the most of it for not only ourselves, but for others as well. And so that's what we do at the American Humanist Association. We're a 501c3 educational organization based in Washington, D.C. And we work to represent humanists, atheists, freethinkers, secularists, and anybody who essentially stands for our mission um, and supports uh, the separation of church and state and increasing the respectability of non-believers and non-religious Americans in the United States. That's our mission in a nutshell. Um, so, so we have a diverse group of types of members, um, and I'm just going to go over uh, just some information about what we've been doing over the past year. Like that, okay, there we go. Um, so AHA by the numbers, uh, we have 32,000 members and supporters. These are people who donate and um, get our magazine, thehumanist.com, and other materials. We have 51,000 email subscribers to thehumanist.com, which is free, so if you're not a member of AHA, uh, but you'd like to learn more about us, I encourage you to sign up and, and get the humanist.com email every Friday. Uh, I write a little message um, every week, and then we have a lot of original articles related to current events um, as related to humanism. Uh, we have half a million Facebook fans. We just surpassed that number just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, that's great for people who are on Facebook every day, which I'm one of them, and uh, to get information about what the American Humanist Association is doing on a daily basis and our comments about what's going on um, in, in the world. Uh, so it's a good opportunity to learn more about what AHA is doing. Uh, 32,000 Twitter followers. And, um, and we have about two to four million people that are getting our information on social media every week. So you may not necessarily have liked you know, the American Human Association on Facebook, but the reach is farther than that because your friends share a post that we put up and your friends see it and your friends' friends see it. And so it's about building a brand and getting a lot more people knowing what humanism is all about, that we're a national organization that's promoting humanism. Um, so that's, that's one way of which we're trying to increase our membership and reach on social media. Uh, many of you know that we have a legal center, the Opic 90 Humanist Legal Center, and a large part of our work is filing lawsuits to protect the separation of church and state and the rights of humanists and atheists uh, whenever their rights are being violated. 
Um, currently, we actually have 10 uh, church-state separation law lawsuits happening right now. Um, quite often, uh, this is related to what we call non-litigation, where we simply send a letter to a, a state county official letting them know of a certain violation that's happening in their community. And um, usually they say, okay, you're right, we're breaking the law, we're gonna fix that, we'll take away the nativity scene, or we'll stop doing these teacher prayer in public schools, and then there's no problem, and, and, and we don't have to file a lawsuit. But sometimes we do, because they really want to insert religion back into public schools as badly as they can. Um, so we'll file a lawsuit, but generally win. We have about an 88% win rate on all the lawsuits that we've conducted since forming the legal center. Um, and we have three in-house attorneys and over 140 cooperating attorneys across the country that help us uh, file lawsuits when, for whatever reason, our three lawyers in D.C. don't have jurisdiction. If anybody is a lawyer here and would like to join our legal center, we would welcome you. It would be, it'd be great to get your advice. Um, actually, just in the past three days since we've been to Houston, we've won three church-state separation cases. One was removing a nativity scene in, at a courthouse in Arkansas. That just happened a couple of days ago. The second was stopping Gideon Bible distribution that a teacher was doing in Kansas. Um, she was trying to be very sneaky. She would say, okay, class, there are Bibles out in the hallway. You can go outside and pick up a Bible. I'm not telling you to do it, but I just want to let you know that they're out there. But of course, when all the students get up and go get a Bible and you're the only student who's the atheist humanist, and you know, how does that make you feel? You know, you feel pressure and it's certainly inappropriate. It's, it's a really creative way that a lot of these teachers and administrators are trying to skirt the law regarding religion um, and in the public school. So that's a case that we just won as well. Um, we got a letter from the school saying that they're gonna stop that practice. Um, and the third one, which just got us in Us Weekly, shockingly enough, um, was related to a Pastafarian woman in Massachusetts who was denied the right to wear a colander on her head for her driver's license photo. Um, raw men, right? Um, <laughs> Um, you know, that's, that's an opportunity, for, you know, we, but we take that seriously. I mean, if this, is, if this is somebody who sincerely believes in the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, they have the right to wear a religious headgear just like other religions do. And so we, we stand up not only for the rights of humanists and atheists, but for religious minorities as well, because we think that it's important for you to not only believe, but not believe. And so, uh, but we got into Us Weekly, which I, I find is a big victory for um, communications people, I think. <laughs> Why am I going backwards? I'm sorry. Down. Okay, there we go. Um, we also lobby, being in Washington, D.C., uh, we lobby on Capitol Hill. We have a full-time lobbyist on staff, Matthew Bulger. Um, one of the things I'm particularly proud of that we advocate is the Darwin Day Resolution. Uh, this is something that we started back in 2011. Some of you remember, may remember Representative Pete Stark, who was the first out humanist atheist in Congress. And uh, he was the first to introduce the Darwin Day Resolution back in 2011. And since then, we've successfully found uh, co-sponsors like Rush Holt from New Jersey and Jim Himes from Connecticut to reintroduce the resolution uh, to recognize the importance of evolution in public schools, the importance of science, the importance of recognizing Charles Darwin. Um, and every year we reintroduce it, you know, and it'll take some time for it to eventually pass, of course. But, um, but it's something that once you start doing, it starts to build momentum, we start getting a lot more people supporting it, and then hopefully uh, it'll pass in the future. The same goes for the National Day of Reason, um, which is the first Thursday of May and is counter to the National Day of Prayer. We, have a, we had a resolution for the first time this year introduced by Representative Mike Honda of California. Um, we held over the summer, you know, many of you probably heard about the horrific killings in Bangladesh folks who are atheist bloggers, writing about free thinking, writing about humanism who have been killed. Uh, this is something that we, have over the several years, have been pressuring the State Department to really act on um, and recognizing that atheists are part of religious freedom and that we deserve protections just like any other religion. And so we've been putting a lot of pressure on our state officials to do something about that. Um, and one of the things that we did was hold a congressional briefing where we invited members of Congress to attend and listen to speakers, myself, um, other humanist speakers and atheist speakers about the persecution of specifically humanists and atheists that are happening abroad. Um, and so we had, we had a great turnout for that. Um, and then we're always regularly meeting with members of Congress, um, 
you know, members of the White House, particularly with the Office of uh, Faith-Based Initiatives and State Department officials to let them know that we're here. Um, we obviously lobby on all kinds of issues, you know, school vouchers, um, you know, support for Planned Parenthood, climate change, you know, anything that's related to the progressive agenda within humanism, we work to lobby on. So that's, that's a lot of the active work that we do. Grassroots achievements. Um, so as wonderfully that uh, the Humanists of Houston is one of our uh, 180 chapters and affiliates across the country. Um, we're increasing the number of humanist celebrants, people who can conduct humanist weddings and funerals. Um, we issue small grants to local groups as well, um, from you know buying T-shirts to do a volunteer event to support for a building, you know, all kinds of things. We can help with some small grants. Uh, we're working to increase the number of humanists who can conduct secular invocations before um, city council meetings. We all know what happened with the Greece case a few years ago, and so we say, well, if you're going to allow for legislative prayer, then you're going to have to have humanist prayer as well. Um, and so we encourage a lot of people to participate in that program. And then, of course, if, um, if you're a humanist celebrant or new to being a celebrant but would like training, um, one of our affiliates, the Humanist Institute, is our educational affiliate. And so you can get training courses and learn more about how to be a successful celebrant. And so on top of the legal, legislative, grassroots work that we do, we have all kinds of other programs. Um, the LGBT Humanist Council makes sure that we're, we're, we're working toward, well, marriage equality is, has been successful, so that's great too, but there's all kinds of other issues um, that we still need to solve with the LGBT community, and so we're continuing to support that. Um, you know, Darwin Day, you know, uh, National Day of Reason again, um, our Education Center, our Political Action Committee, we just launched a couple of years ago, where we're funding humanist and atheist candidates for public office. I think we even funded somebody in the Houston area, I think, a couple of years ago, um, who was running for office who was a humanist. Um, so so that's, that's really direct funds that are actually going to a candidate so that they can be elected, because we certainly need more humanist and atheists serving in public office. Um, and another program of ours is the Boycott the Pledge campaign. This is something tied to some of our lawsuits that we've been doing with the Legal Center. But we're essentially encouraging public students to sit down during the Pledge of Allegiance until under God is removed from the pledge. It's been a good opportunity to educate people about the history of the Pledge of Allegiance, which a lot of people really don't know. They really don't know that it was not part of the original pledge, that it was added in the 50s as part of being anti godless communist and all of that. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's a good opportunity for students to educate other students about the rights of humanists and atheists who oppose the words under God and the pledge. Um, you know, so whether you call it boycott the pledge or restore the Pledge of Allegiance, um, you know, there's lots of ways uh, you know, we're trying to get the word out about the campaign. Um, but what we're really trying to do is encourage students to recognize what the pledge really means. And we actually get letters on a daily basis from students who are saying, you know, I sat down during the Pledge of Allegiance, my teacher asked me why, I explained why, but she let me sit and it's really been successful and then the next day my friends joined me in sitting down and it's been a really great opportunity to explain the history of the Pledge and why we, we essentially need to do away with, with under God. Um, so it's, it's really overall been a positive experience. And when it hasn't been a positive experience, such as the case of a child in North Dakota, who was six years old, by the way, and was literally forced to stand, lifted up by the teacher during the Pledge of Allegiance, or a case in Pennsylvania where um, a little girl went to the nurse's office early in the day, the pledge was being recited over the loudspeaker, she sat down, uh, the nurse saw that she was sitting down, and said, I'm not going to treat you, even if you're sick, get out of my nurse's office. That's when we intervene <laughs> and we say, no, students do have the right to sit down during the pledge, um, and forcing them to do so, of course, is wrong on so many levels, including picking up a child. Um, so it's been, a, it's been, even though there have been some negative instances, it's been an overall positive experience. And so I just want to highlight a couple of recent memes that we shared. You know, as I mentioned, we have. Um, 500, over 500,000 followers on Facebook, and um, these memes have been a really good opportunity to show what humanism is all about. Um, people aren't really reading articles anymore, so I have to 
you know, put it in a small image so people actually read and then see what's going on in the news. Um, I mean, no offense by that, but, it, but it's getting to be true. And um, so I just wanted to share a couple of the most recent ones, um, particularly the Bernie Sanders one um, on the left, which was really popular because he was asked whether or not he believed in God. And he said, I am who I am and what I believe in and what my spirituality is about is that we're all in this together, which sounds like humanism to us. I'd love it if you could come out and say he's a humanist. Um, so, you know, we, we find quotes and opportunities, you know, by politicians, by celebrities who say something related to church separation. You know, Kareem Abdul Dabar just said something in relation to uh, the separation of church and state. And we try to highlight these quotes and share them so that people know what humanism is all about. And um, they see somebody they recognize, that they know, that they admire, say, see that they see something, say something very humanistic. You know, and then and then it's something that they're aware of, and, and hopefully later on they can identify as a humanist or at least support what we do. Um, I particularly like this one on the right. It said, "How many times was God, Jesus, or blessed mentioned in the debates?" And um, surprised that you know Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, Rand Paul actually didn't say any of those words. Hillary Clinton said it four times, um, and then no other Democratic nominee said it at all. Um, we're not partisan, but it's just interesting to see how often God is mentioned in the GOP debates compared to the Democratic debates. So it's just something that we like to point out, you know, stop the religious pandering, let's keep focused on the issues. That's, that's really our goal. Um, and then, of course, things, you know, whenever, you know, marriage equality that happened earlier in the year, the Bangladesh bloggers, whenever there's a new chapter, um, you know, we do a fill-in-the-blank series where we encourage people to, um, to, you know, say, I define humanism as... You know, things like that. We're, we're always trying to engage with our members and, and hear more about what they have to say. Okay. Um, and finally, I wanted to mention, of course, we have our big 75th anniversary conference happening in Chicago, May 26th to the 29th. And I actually haven't told anybody this, um, the awardees that we have. We actually just solidified them over the past couple of days. I think Roy's giving me a look saying, uh, I don't think you're supposed to tell everybody to do that. <laughs> but, um, but these, these are just four of the awardees and speakers that are going to be coming to our conference. Um, Medea Benjamin, who's the co-founder of Code Pink, uh, a big popular um, political activist. Um, Ernie Chambers, who's the Nebraska State Senator. I think many of you are familiar with the work of Ernie Chambers. He's receiving our Lifetime Achievement Award. John Delancey, who played Q on Star Trek. I, I don't know much about Star Trek. Someone's going to have to explain. I know, I know everyone's like, look, look, you're a bad humanist. You don't know anything about Star Trek. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch all of his episodes. That's my task before I see him in Chicago. But he's gonna be coming and receiving our Humanist Arts Award. And Bishop John Shelby Spong, who is an author and a progressive uh, bishop, who will be receiving our Religious Liberty Award. Um, we will hopefully soon be announcing our Humanist of the Year. We're very excited about that, uh, but I shouldn't say anything more than that, <laughs> just in case. But these are just four of uh, our speakers that are coming. We're going to be adding speakers all the time. In fact, I think I'm, I'm talking to Vic about coming in to speak about the great work that the Humanists of Houston are doing um, as a model for our other chapters. So we're hoping to do that. I've got it on video now, so you have to come. So ways you can promote humanism, certainly. Um, if you're not a member of the American Human Association, I encourage you to do so. Uh, membership starts at $35, but we have options for folks who, who, who can just give some. But, um, and uh, it really does make a difference. Uh, we're about a $2 million organization doing all of this uh, you know, important work for humanists and church state separation. And so membership really does matter, so I encourage you to join if you haven't. Um, certainly follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, learn more about what we're doing there and share those images. You know, if you see something that, that we're doing that you like, share it with your friends and family, start dialogues, and, and let's have more people learning more about what humanism is all about. And then if you see a, a church state violation in your area, um, you know, if you're seeing that there's a school that's, that's teaching um, creationism or passing out Bibles during school hours or, you know, nativity scenes, you know, religious monuments that are happening on, on public ground, just let us know about it. We have three lawyers um, who are very fast at responding to inquiries. Um, and, and just let us know, and, and maybe that could, that could turn into something where we're, we're working to protect the separation of church and state. Um, so there's all kinds of things. And of course, I would add another bullet point. You know, donate to your local group, attend your local group meetings, and really you know, be, be a part of a local community. And, and I, I think it's really amazing 
having learned what the humanists of Houston do here, it's just it's just truly tremendous. So, thank you very much um, for for supporting AHA, supporting your local group, and we really appreciate you getting the word out about uh, what it means to be good without a God.